Hello everyone, how y'all doing out there today? This is B-Belt Dan. Today, I want to introduce you to somebody. Here is Jeff. Jeff here is a Griffin puppet that I created about, oh, 10 to 11 years ago. Can't actually remember exactly when. And he is special to me because he is one of the first puppets, actually the first puppet that I've ever created from the ground up. Previous puppets that I've made was either built around an existing puppet or I've had a lot of help with them. But with this one, I completely designed, completely built up. I took the cloth and I stitched them into forms and put them together. I made the head and the beak and the whole mechanisms and everything. And he is one that I usually take around to the Renaissance festivals. He's always a big hit there and, I've, and everything. I've even had some people ask me if I've been willing to sell him, but no, I'm not gonna sell him. Now, he has actually gone through quite a few little changes throughout the years. Uh, first off, mostly with the wings. I must have switched wings with him, I don't know, several times. The first wings were homemade, completely out of cloth, hated the way they looked, got rid of them in the next year, and we did some store-bought Halloween wings with real feathers, but those fell apart. I think I bought three of those, and each one of those lasted about two years each before they would completely fall apart. And this final year, I'm actually getting, hopefully, some what would be his final wings would be some cloth wings. The biggest change that he's went through was actually in his head. His very first head was made out of, believe it or not, Coke bottles. And they kept it very light. I took Coke bottles, cut them up, and reformed them into his beak, his skull, and mounted a couple of tennis, or not tennis balls, not tennis balls, uh, ping pong balls for the eyes and it worked out great as far as being light. I can carry it around all day No problem working the head, but however though it got crushed So I had to replace it so I came up with this head that he's currently having right now Which is made out of cardboard and it's for the most part sturdy. There's a little bit of deformation But not too much the beak is also made out of a little thicker plastic I can't remember what I used and his head, for the most part, has been working out very well. Only problem is, is that with this head, I gave him an eye blink mechanism, which worked for the first day. After that, it stopped working, and I've been meaning to get inside to repair it, but I'm afraid to do that. And with all of that, that kind of leads us to what we're going to be doing in this episode. Is I'm actually going to be taking Jeff here, and I'm going to be actually giving him an upgrade, trying to improve him just a little bit. I'm going to completely give him a brand new head, replace the skull, the mouth, the eye mechanism, give him a much better eye blinking mechanism, his hair, which is actually supposed to be fur. I'm going to be changing that out as well because this one has a couple of problems with it, which most people don't know, but I know about it, and it's gotten dirty. It's not quite the same shade of white that I was hoping it would be, and do a couple of small repairs, a couple of small additional improvements, replace one of his missing talons here, and give him brand new wings. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take him apart, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what we're going to be going, coming from his current mechanism, his current build, and then I'll be showing you what we're gonna be doing to improve him. So, I'll be right back. Oh, and y'all may wanna probably look away for this part. It might get a little graphic. All right, everybody. And I'm done removing it. I had to cut away. I didn't want to show y'all that because it just looked disturbing, or maybe it's just me because I created him, but got all the skin removed. The beak is still on the body. But you pull this back. We got the skin, but this is all going to be replaced. I just super glued it in and by removing it, it pulled away quite a bit of the cardboard. But as you can see probably from here, yeah, it's getting a bit dirty. And one of the issues that I did was is that I sewed one of these pieces on upside down so the nap of the hair is going the opposite direction from the rest of the hair. It kind of went started slowly after a lot of work. Yeah, you can kind of see, yeah, after a lot of work, it started going back or falling the way with the rest of the hair, but it's still not perfect. So I'm going to be 
fixing that. But here is the skull. It's concrete. It was just the top portion because my mouth would go right here. But yeah, that just looks really, really disturbing without context of the rest of the of the puppet here. But yeah, the I figured out what the problem was with the eye, but it still doesn't work as good as I would have liked. We're getting way too much flex into this, and that's because the whole mechanism is anchored to this cardboard, and over years it gotten softer and softer, which is going to make me rethink about how I want to do the next head, but it's what happened was is that not only is we got flexing, but this piece right here slid down to the bottom, so I wasn't getting enough leverage. Getting it there, I get a little bit better movement with the eyes. But it still wasn't as good as I as it was originally. I think that's all because of the flex that we got here inside. But I mean for a good solid two years this skull was or not two years, longer than that. For for quite some time the skull was very sturdy, but now it's kinda of starting to give in. The years have not been kind with it. But I'm going to do away with all of this and we're going to rebuild it. I've used ping pong balls for the eyes. I think originally I had on the old one was wooden uh, wooden spheres but we're going to be using ping pong balls for the eyes again and some of it is going to be made using items that you can find at any kind of um, uh, home improvement, not home improvement, craft store, but some of these, especially the mechanism, I'm going to 3D print because I had good luck with that in the past on my uh, old man puppet head that y'all seen on my channel. So might as well go ahead and continue on with that. So let's go ahead and get started. And working on diligently for hours and hours on coming up with a basic sketch design on how the internal mechanism is going to work. I am going to 3D print almost all of this except for the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and use ping pong balls in those which we'll see. And they're all going to be put held together using various different screws and stuff. The mechanism is pretty much straightforward. I mean the mouth, we have, of course have the mouth, upper and lower jaw and everything and then right here we have a platform where the eye mechanism is going to be residing at. We're going to have to hold tension to keep the eyelids open is going to be a spring that's going to be attached from here to here and then from here and this hole right here going up to these brackets here is going to be the strings. They're going to go up into here, go into a pulley which I've designed which we can see over into here, go down into another pulley here, down towards the back where there's a pulley here go under and then over another pulley and then from there I really don't know what that's going to do how I'm going to tie these into my fingers which will be holding and residing into this piece right here to make the eyes move now the eyes are going to be individually uh, operated so I can actually do not just both eyes but I can do one eye at a time to make to make him blink because his character he seems like he would be the type of person to be doing that now i've used blender a lot so utilize trying to learn to use this has been a bit of a learning curve but it's once you start to get to know it it's actually a very interesting program uh, it does a lot of things that blender can't do or if they can do i don't know if if it does do it because it uses a completely different uh method of modeling. However though modeling in 3D as opposed to just building in real life is that I don't really have a good sense of scale here on how everything is you know in relation to my hand and movement and spacing and everything like that so I constantly go in 3D print this out you know test it and then go in and refine it. I've had to refine this several times in fact the number of times that I've actually refined this I almost have a a secondary puppet almost but I can't use those mechanisms because they don't work for one way or the for one reason or the other so we're gonna go ahead and 3d print this and put this together and see how it looks
All right, as we can see here, I've 3D printed almost every part of the mechanism and I'm actually starting to assemble it or do a rough assembly to see how it works. I've already got spring tied in onto this side and I've already started working on this base that's going to be mounted right about there. And this is where the strings are going to come through and then I'll try to figure out from there of about exactly how my hand is going to fit inside here and operate the two blinking the two blinking eyes what I mentioned in the other episode I have some spare parts here of some failures that I've done when I was 3d printing and some modifications that I've made so we're going to put those off to the side and we're going to be working on these pieces here I need to go ahead and try to get some uh, some more of these screws because I have this size and I have this size I need one in between so I can insert them in and bolt them onto the other side or what I'm probably going to do is what I did with the other puppet is instead I might try to get a piece of metal that is roughly that same diameter that will fit through both sides and then super glue them in to where they will stay and not move but the pulleys here will still continue to be able to spin freely inside there so it's still a bit of a work in progress of trying to figure out where to mount all of this and I might end up having to design more pieces and print them out to redirect the strings here to where I can move them around so I have to see so I'm gonna go ahead and now go ahead and try to finish all of this assembling it putting it on or at least this one side and see if we can figure out how those strings are going to be ran and how I'm going to operate it and then once I'm done with that there's really not a whole lot left that I need to do except for uh, take the eyeballs which I'm going to use as regular ping pong balls glue them in drill small little holes in the side so the screws will go through and into the eye to kind of help anchor it and start building the the skull now how I'm going to do that I'm still thinking about it. hopefully I'll get that all figured out before I get all of these pieces here I also need to go ahead and slightly file down this one these sides here because when I designed it the tolerances it fits but it's a very snug fit and I don't want that I want it to be kind of loose to where it can spin freely so the string when it's being pulled it's spinning these and not rubbing on that so let me go ahead and get started with that and I'll be back with this completely assembled okay here's where I'm at right now after several days and countless hours of printing and going through several layers of filament I still haven't quite got what I'm looking for. I came close, but not exactly. I went through a couple of different revisions, and each revision worked to a certain degree, but I wasn't really happy with them. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the revisions that I did and what I'm doing to try to come up with a design that is both feasible and effective and efficient and lightweight and the whole nine yards everything that I'm looking forward to this the first rendition and it's broken a few times um, so I have to apologize was this one right here and once again it worked I mean it the mouth still moved it however though I wasn't able to quite get it to properly um, function without doing a lot of modifications to the head itself because originally this string right here was going to be going into the beak to where I can just go like this with my two fingers for the beak and once again it did indeed work 
I dropped it, so I'm going to have another reason why I have to go ahead and revisit a bunch of these, uh, a bunch of these designs. But I mean, it works as you can see. The eye blinks here. But for my fingers to be inside here and to get that range of motion that I needed to get the eyes to completely blink, I'd have to have my finger way up here, which means that the beak would have to be higher and wider. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to mess too much with the original dimensions. I kind of like the look and the character I'm, that I originally came up with. I have some leeway here and there with the design but it was too much more than what I was willing to handle. And plus the other thing was is um, to keep my fingers on this plane, I was a little bit limited to about how much I can get this mouth to open up. So I abandoned this completely and I started on a revision two, which all I got was to the beak. And this one right here, what it did is that it, if the eyes were here, it would place to where I'd have two fingers back here to where I would individually be able to control each individual eye. So once again, imagine the eyes being right here. Um, let me borrow this. This is for another project. But imagine the eyes being right there, and I'd be able to control it from right here. And this design started working in theory, but as soon as I printed out just the mouth portion, I immediately realized that, you know, first off, I would have to relearn because with this particular design, with the hinge point here, but my natural hinge point being back here, I would actually be doing a closing motion to open the mouth, I'd have to close my fingers, the opposite of what I'm normally used to. So I decided to go, I mean, it, once again, it worked. I mean, I was able to get a decent amount of movement with it, and it would keep my fingers relatively behind the mechanism, and there would be more of the head that can fill in here. However, though, just this here was not working for me. So with all that, I was hitting a conundrum that I had to overcome. And that was, I was wasting a lot of filament to try to go ahead and print all these out to only realize that it wasn't going to work. So I decided to go ahead and do this. I decided to go ahead and do some rapid prototyping with regular cardboard because it's cheap. It's, I mean, almost next to free. I mean, you know, you can find cardboard just about anywhere. You know, just take some hot glue, a couple of screws and things like that, but it's relatively cheap. And if I didn't like it, it wasn't a waste. And it was a lot easier for me to go ahead and try to fine tune a bunch of things. So I came up with this, and this is going to be my basis of what I'm going to be now building the actual model around that I'll be 3D printing from here. And as you can see, I managed to keep the hinge here where I wanted it. My fingers are still behind the eyes. However, though, my fingers that control the mouth are much higher and lower. So now it's still kind of a mix between the open and closing motion. It's more of kind of a I pinch with these two joints, but my fingers open up. I don't know if y'all can see that, but this right here, for the most part, really kind of works for me. Takes a little bit of practice for me to try to get it down, but after a while, I'm able to do it. And I use my two fingers here to go ahead and move the eyelids open and close. Now this isn't going to be the finished look. It's going to be using pulleys and other mechanisms. This is going to absolutely work. My, my hand fits inside the entire head. So I'm going to take this design, start getting measurements off it with a couple of modifications and start 3D modeling this and then printing it out. So 
And the other reason about also why I wanted to do this was kind of show y'all out there that even if you don't have a 3D printer with cardboard, you can actually still make a decent puppet head with it. I mean, it's this is real good. I mean, this is going to work. It's just not a long-lasting solution because it's cardboard. It's paper in the end. So it's going to, you know, just like with my other one here, it's going to start collapsing. This is the original one. It's going to start collapsing. It's going to retain moisture. It's going to start kind of rotting a little bit. So that's why I want to try to 3D print this. But you can't. This entire mechanism, nothing but just super glue and cardboard and very little bit of amount of tape. And once again, it works. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking measurements off of this because I'm going to try to get as close as I can to this exact design with a couple of modifications here and there and put it into Fusion 360 and start working on it and then start printing it out. Let's see where we're at. All right, everyone. After a couple of days, I think I finally have something of a working prototype here. Uh, still not absolutely perfect, but it's getting a lot closer. It's very similar to the design of this. However, though, I think what I need to do is actually have this point here and this point here attached to the front. So when I'm pulling up, it's actually lifting from this point or these two points as opposed to trying to move here. I mean, this still works as you can see, but not as well as my original design here. And I think that that's just basically where the attachment point is, is my issue. So this isn't put together. It's tape, as you can see right there. And I've kind of used some, uh, uh, hot glue to tack this all together so I could take this apart very easily and redo it but I'm definitely getting a lot closer so what I'm going to do here is because it's going to take a little bit more work is I'm going to go ahead and call a stop to this particular video we'll call this episode one and we'll do an episode two and between that episode and this episode I should have this worked out and completely working. So in the next episode, hopefully I'll have that all figured out and we're going to start working on the skull and get it fleshed out and including working on the wings because these wings are falling apart. So I have another idea of how we're going to be doing the wings to be a lot stronger, sturdier and last longer. So. Hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you go ahead and tune back in on episode two where I hopefully have this whole thing of Jeff put back together. So this is B-Bell Dad. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.